Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your weekly investor update. I'm your host, Justin Scott, investment banking analyst, and we're happy to bring you another episode here today. Joining me is my co-host, Shanice Williams, investment advisor. How are you doing, Shanice? I'm good, Justin. Thanks. Excellent. Today, we'll be discussing Dolphin Cove Limited and Main Event Entertainment Group. And we're excited to dive into these insights with you here today. If you like the content, don't forget to hit like and share this video. And if it's your first time here, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to receive all notifications. We upload content just like this once per week. Also, if you'd like to embark on your first investment journey, you should take that first step with Mayberry. Follow us on our social media to learn more about how you can get started today. So let's kick things off with Main Event Group. Over to you, Shanice. Hi, everybody. So I'll be discussing Main Event Entertainment Group. Um, if you are new and you may not be familiar with the company, um, I just want to give you a little background on it. So Main Event is a marketing and events um, promotion, execution, and management company. They offer their suite of services to festivals, corporate and social events, weddings, um, and they also offer a digital signage service for companies such as Digicel and Island Grill. Now, the company launched in 2004 and they IPO'd in 2017 and listed on the junior market in February of 2017. Now, looking at their three months that ended in January 2024, their revenues for 2024 was five hundred and sixty seven million, which was nine percent known from the year prior. And this was actually due to well the company attributed it to a fall off um the fall off in revenue to a one time event for one of their major clients, which is not likely to reoccur in the subsequent periods. Um the cost of sales, however, actually also reduced by twenty percent to 251 million. Um, so while the revenue is down, the company actually made a strategic effort to protect their margins. So the gross profit increased by 1% and their overall gross margins moved from 50% to 56% in 2024. Um, their total expenses also went up this year by 12% to 206 million. Um, their net profit brought it down a little bit um, compared to the prior year, went down 15% to $100 million, and that left them with an EPS of $0.33. Cents. Looking at their balance sheet, um, they were actually able to increase their equity this year due to a significant decrease in their liabilities and their assets moving up 5%. Um, looking at their key statistics, so the company is currently trading at around $13.59. They're trading at a PE of 21.49 times compared to the junior market average, which is at about 16, 64 times. Um, their trailing EPS is 63 cents. Um, the 52-week high for main event is $17.50. And and their 52-week low is $6.95, and they're operating at a market cap of roughly $4 billion. So if you look at their quarterly movements over um, the past couple quarters, you can see that they have really been improving on it since, especially coming out of COVID, where we weren't really seeing anything happen in the social scene. Um, so you can see the growth that they've been doing quarter by quarter, coming off a loss um, from last quarter to now having the 100 mil profit. The profit is expected to continue going forward because their next quarter numbers, which is going to be their February, March, April quarter, that's going to include things such as Carnival, had the Lost in Time, the Protégé concert, we just had Champs, and our tourism number are booming now more than ever. So main event is definitely going to be capitalizing on a lot of that. And I think next quarter for main events is going to be something very significant that we should look out for and possibly line up ourselves to benefit from what we're about to see. Now, if you look at the stock price history, um, you can see that it, had, it hit an all-time high of at the 1750 and it's been steadily trading between the 13 and $15 range. 
um, after listing at an IPO price of $2. So a significant growth over the years, the few years that it has been listed and it's expected to grow a lot more, especially what we're expecting to see coming up in the coming quarters with main events. Justin, any thoughts on main events? Uh, thank you for that, Shanice. I'm definitely aligned with you there on that thought. I love what Main Event is doing right now. I love how they're positioned as one of the leading event production companies that we have here in Jamaica. I especially like what they what they released at the most recent meeting that they had, where they increased their share capital to basically being unlimited shares. So now they're with, well, with current constraints of the junior market $500 million limit, they can raise up to just a, close to $400 million. But if they wait up until the 750 million um, limit increase that, you know, the finance minister had informed us about in the last budget presentation. So we can expect them to, um, to wait a little bit more up until that threshold has been increased to give them the opportunity to just raise as much as they would like to. Considering the, the great uptick we're having in events most recently, big and better productions, they're going to want to better facilitate those things with, um, you know, increased equipment, you know, towards the lights, the facilities, the holdings, um, the fixtures and things like that for those events. So whether it be that they're going to be deepening their investment into that line, they would like to even have their own event venue or maybe even just like warehousing for something like that, then, you know, the, the, the prospects are, are very open for main event right now. So I do like where they're going. So that's definitely something we can look forward to with main event. So I'm aligned with it there. I love the company and I think we should be seeing great numbers of them coming soon. All right then. So next up, I'll be covering Dolphin Cove. All right. So let's take a look at our screen, ladies and gentlemen. So for the year in December 2023, Dolphin Cove's revenue increased by 13% from 15 million to 17 million. The direct costs went up um, a bit more <laughs> than um, and in line with that from 1.7 million to 2.3 million dollars. Uh, gross profits naturally are now up 10% from 13 to 14 million. Total expenses are up in line with the revenues um, from 9 million to, to, to 10.3 million dollars. Net finance costs are dwindling because they would have recently just paid off their the um the loan that they had with Sagicor. So now it's down from five hundred and twenty five thousand to three three hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. And then now we're getting all the way down to net profits, which increased marginally by about three percent from three point five million to three point nine million dollars over the course of their financial year. But um I believe more much more is to come with that. So that translates now into a about a three percent increase if it considering it in the same inline of the arm of its, of its U.S. dollar reporting. Uh, but, you know, translated now with the decimal changes, it's about a 6% increase from $1.15 to $1.22. Let's take a look at their balance sheet. Shareholders equity is up 13% from about $28 million to $31 million. The total assets have increased about 15% from $33 million to $37 million. And total liabilities are up by 24% from $4.8 million to $6 million. Um, Dolphin Cove currently trades at about $19.70 at a P-E ratio of 16.2 times. That's a bit above where the main market is right now, but I do believe that's more indication of where the market has Dolphin Cove to be going this year, um, especially with all these increased tourism earnings that I'll get into very soon. Um, it has a trailing EPS of $1.22 or $476,000. Um, their 52-week high is about $22. $20 and a 52-week low of about $13. So it has that small band and a market cap of about 7.7 .7 billion Jamaican dollars. So Dolphin Cove is a pretty seasonal company as you'd expect, considering that it's heavily correlated with our tourism seasons. So over the last couple of years, since about 2020, their Q1 and Q2 would have been very significant to them, considering that it's along the line of a calendar year. Um, whereas naturally would see 2020, as you'd expect, the profits would have fallen significantly, but with a sharp return in 2021, just around a, a million dollars per quarter. Um, now that has significantly increased as we've gotten to around 2023, um, because we've been experiencing a serious tourism boom right now. Everybody wants to come to Jamaica. A lot of people are traveling here. It's, it's a huge destination um, for, for a motley of reasons, whether it be that we have the rooms compared to some of the other Caribbean nations. It's, um, it's a very popular place. A lot of celebrities are popping up here, as you can tell by the carnival season just now. We had a whole list of early celebrities coming through. So a lot of people have their eyes on Jamaica right now and expect that to continue going forward. So their fourth quarter has been, you know, pretty, pretty consistently a last quarter for them, typically because that's when they'd be making payouts to their parent company. So with that one outlier per year, Dolphin Cove has been doing seriously well 
over the course of their financial years. Let's take a look at the stock price history. It's been trading pretty flatly, all things considered. But I do believe that's um, more of an indication of waiting for some serious increase in earnings to take place. So with that being said, the outlook for the remainder of the fiscal year for 2024 is very buoyant. Last year's estimated that the country made about $4.2 billion in tourism earnings. This year, the Ministry of Tourism anticipates another great year of tourism influx, exceeding 4 million people, which would result in approximate earnings of around 4.3 billion US dollars. The significant uptick in the companies is directly correlated with the amazing tourism boom that we've been very privileged to experience over the last three years. Notably, the Ian Fleming Airport saw its first touchdown in the last week of February when American airline travelers made their way into the island, which is very good news for Dolphin Cove as it adds an entirely new port of access right under home turf for tourism, for tourists to stop by. Within the last couple of months, the cruise ship terminal in St. Anne was in fact damaged due to a crash vessel in the dock which would have resulted in cruise ships being unable to dock there. But I'm aware that relevant organizations have been working towards relocating the ships to Reynolds Pier, otherwise known as James Bond Pier in very short order. The only issue though is that it's only able to accommodate one ship at a time. And considering that for 2022, the cruise segment was the main driver of their revenues, which is understandable given that cruise ship passengers are typically locked into a small region of access for a short period of time, making it a very opportune spot to visit. So I can only imagine the impact over the time period that would give, I would say, muted effects in the upcoming financial results, which would reflect that. But all things considered, the cash has increased by 30% up to about 1.8 million USD, even considering that over 2023, they paid out a whopping 4 million USD in dividends, um, a 100% increase on the, on the prior year. To me, this is very indicative of great financial health. Their operations are experiencing, which, we might expect them to continue with the increased business from tourists, naturally. And the fact that they finished paying off the debts last year. So I expect a whole lot more for, for the cash coming this year. But um, I should note that the company has some taxes payable in current liabilities to the tune of about 1.1 million US, which they've organized with the TAJ to pay off in a 10 monthly installments. The date's not yet set by when it's supposed to start, but it's current liability, so you can't expect that before the end of this financial year. This is almost totally offset by the 1 million USD that they had in fixed income securities matured in 2023. So that's not really a huge concern for them. The cash flow is good. The cash turnover is good for them. So I'm, I'm expecting things are going to be fine. But finally, for, for the upcoming plans, their chairman and CEO, Stafford Burroughs, is very focused on their local expansions at Dolphin Cove and Lucy, which is in Hanover, and the Yamana Venture Park in the Grill to further upgrade the operations and give additional rides and amenities to keep up with consumer demands. He also made mention of an acquisition, which is very interesting to me, as it sounds like something is already in the pipeline. We don't know what it is just as yet, but we may hear about it within the coming months or maybe the next fin financial year for them. But I like where Dolphin Cove is. Tourism, it's directly correlated with the tourism, and as long as these numbers keep going up, then so will Dolphin Coves. Um, Shanice, any thoughts? Yeah, Justin, I completely agree with you. Um, DCOV is definitely one of the direct ways that you can invest in the uptick in tourism that we are seeing and we're going to continue seeing um, over the next couple of months, couple of years. Um, there are significant dividend payout, which has always been the strong point with DCOV for me. Dividends close to 4% in yield um, based on the current prices. That's something that is definitely good to have in your portfolio um, to offset maybe even other losses. So Decove, strong company, strong future, um, strong divs. So I like it. All right. Thank you for that, Shanice. So guys, that's it for today's discussions. I'd like to thank all of our viewers for tuning in today. Your support is always appreciated. I'd also like to thank my co-host Shanice for contributing to today's discussions. So with that, if you're ever curious about updates on our virtual investor forum, then find us on social media. We share our live stream dates and upcoming guests on our, all our social media pages. So give us a follow and stay on top of all things forum related. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Maybear Investments Limited. Click the bell to receive all notifications. Keep safe. I remember wise investors, slow and steady wins the race. Goodbye.